Hey guys, we're here on the Galleon again, and our player is in trouble. Our ship is infested with enemies and, and surrounded by giant octopi. So let's say our player is engaged with this particular mollusk, and is it a mollusk? And as we navigate the levels of the ship, we, we stay engaged. So unlike normal multi-level maps, where they're all splayed out um, in different scenes or next to each other, we're able to stay in one scene and our combat tracker stays intact. Everything is happening here, but it's happening in three dimensions. So many of you have seen the levels module and its ability to do this kind of thing. Well, it's October of 2022 and levels just got a major upgrade with the Foundry V10 version and it's now easier than ever to use. So this is gonna be an in-depth tutorial for all the noobs out there. It's gonna replace the older tutorials. So, so the new people who've never used it before can learn the new system using the new interface and the new settings. But if you're already a levels veteran, just watch the first part for the changes you'll want to know about. Then I'll walk through all the major settings and we'll finish by building a sample scene together so you can see how I make multi-level scenes with the new changes in place. Now, before we start, if you are new to the channel, I'm Bailey Wiki, and along with Zephyr and the rest of the team, we teach you guys, you GMs, just like us, we're GMs, how to build amazing experiences for players by combining art and technology in ways that everyday GMs can follow along. You don't need to know JavaScript typically to be able to use our stuff. We're also artists and technologists, so most of the scenes and the props that you see in our tutorials are also available in our Patreon for as little as eight bucks a month. So if you'd like to support our channel and if you'd like to get a ton of flexible assets you can use for really any campaign, I hope you consider checking us out. And with that, let's get into the tutorial. So to quickly touch on the modules that we're going to use today, of course, you're going to want levels. And you're also going to want wall height. So levels requires wall height in order to work. And even though it's not a requirement anymore, uh, I've got better roofs installed uh, because it gives you a little bit more roof functionality. And then surprisingly, and I'll get into this, you want perfect vision installed. That's a, another module that helps with token vision and does some advanced things. I'll explain why that used to be uh, at odds with levels and now they're actually working together. And in fact, you're going to want to have it installed. You're also going to see some other uh, modules today. I'll just show you what they are. The first one is mass edit by Adif. I have the Patreon version. You don't need that, but you'll see me use some functionality from mass edit today. Very likely I use it pretty much every time I build now. Another one is called Quick Quickscale. Quickscale lets you quickly scale up and down tiles. You might find yourself wanting to do that with roofs. There's some built-in functionality with Foundry that does it as well. Another one is Token Magic Effects. This will uh, we're going to use this to do a number of effects today. Nothing required for levels, but you might be impressed by some of the things that you can do. So I'll use some token magic effect. And last is tile scroll. That actually is a replacement to the old parallaxia module. This one's in active development by Ripper. It's what makes this ocean here behind us scroll by. I just mentioned these in case you guys are curious about these and I'll try to mention them if I'm using them during the tutorial today. Okay, so I wanted to build this handy little diagram to help you guys conceptualize how levels works. I'm going to show you also some of the changes, try to use this diagram to show the veterans some of these changes. But the way that levels works is currently in Foundry, Foundry has kind of two concepts. They have a, a background layer and then they've got uh, now like overhead tiles and the ability to have things on different uh sort of elevations right and currently with foundry you can basically get like you know one overhead tile kind of range and then you have this sort of background tile range what levels module does is it creates the ability to, to create any number of levels above or below the background so you know you can have a background that's set at, at elevation zero and then it'll have some walls and other things and it's top of that layer might be elevation 10. So then your next story up might be from 10 to 20 or to 20 to 20 to 30. These can be any numbers that you want. You can go from zero to one or from zero to a hundred to make essentially a level, if you will. And you can go negative. So you can go to negative 10, negative 20, negative 30 or, or any permutation there. 
And you've got certain assets that we're going to care about as we're building levels enabled stuff. The first one is the background. The background you guys are all used to. It's usually the background to the scene. Uh, with Foundry, the background, you can now uh, go underneath the background. And we're going to probably try to leverage that as we're building some of these things. The background is essentially its own level. And by default, I think it's to level zero, but levels actually modifies the background level so you can put it up. Uh, it much, much further back. And you can see here some of the settings for these different things that I'm recommending. The background here, you can have it either be or not be an overhead tile. Um, you can't see through the background. So think of the background layer as a layer that's opaque, meaning you, you could have a, t a token standing on top of the background and one underneath it, and they would never be able to see each other and levels can't make them see each other. So if we want to create something where they can look down through the, the ground level into a basement or whatever, we're going to have to make all of those, um, overhead tiles and move the background to the back. So I'm going to recommend in general that I'll show you a setting in a bit where you can change the background elevation to some like high negative value. Just make sure it's always in the back. And again, that's the elevation. The Z value is a totally different thing, which I'll, I'll dip into here just a second. Um, the Z value is a, is a different layering scheme within Foundry. Foundry has Z values where you can have one tile at a Z value of 100 and another tile with a Z value of 101. And that tile with the Z value of 101 is going to going to overlap or be on top of the, the lower one. That still matters in levels because remember, you can have a lot of different tiles within a particular level and you may still want to manage how those tiles overlap with each other. So knowing your Z values and having some organization around that, it's going to help you build. Um, but remember Z value is different than the elevation, right? I can have something at a Z value. I can have a hundred tiles at a Z value of a hundred, but some of them might be elevation zero to 10. Some might be 10 to 20 and some might be 10 to 30. They're two uh, separate ways of, um, you know, uh, tracking you know, what's on top of what else this happened levels deals with like what actual playable level is that thing on while Z value just uh, looks at specifically, how does that tile relate to every other tile in the scene in terms of if it's on, on top or underneath. The next thing that we want to worry about is floors. So floors are any overhead tiles that we lay down that become a floor of a building, right? So we're always generally going to have it as is overhead going to check that box. I'll show you that in a second. Um, generally I keep mine at fade, although you might want to play with the new radial. That's a new change, uh, with the, the current foundry, um, or the current levels. Basically radial is now in core foundry, but levels lets you change the actual radius around your player. Uh, again, we'll, I'll show you where that setting is at, but now you can have players walk in with that radial kind of occlusion around them. And uh, you can set that distance however you want. It's a really cool effect. And floors, I generally set them at the Z value of 101. I want to set them relatively low because 100 is the default. So you'll see as we build later, I will set them to 101. Uh, next one we care about are roofs. So roofs are just like floors, but they sit on top of a building and essentially they have exposure to the sunlight, as I say. So we're still going to mark them as overhead, uh, but we're going to mark them as a roof. That's a new setting that takes, uh, it replaces the old, um, uh, you know, shows through, uh, uh, vision and fog, uh, or blocks vision and fog. Uh, this is now a toggle where when you toggle it on, it'll behave like a roof. We also want it to either set to fade or we can set to radial. There's another, um, setting called reveals fog of war, which will make sure that this is always exposed. So if you're standing outside of your building, it'll show the, uh, the image of the tile. One change with the new version. Um, I usually set my height. So if it's a roof, it has to have its, its, uh, bottom at whatever it's sitting on. Like this might be a bottom of 30, but its height would be infinity. So unlike a floor who has a fixed height, it's a 20 to 30, 20 being the bottom 30 being the height, a roof is going to be 30 at the bottom and then infinity for height. It's important to remember so that roofs behave the right way. And then I usually give my roofs a Z value of 300 or more, just because I want them to be uh, above every other tile that I may be stacking. You also have walls. Walls are not tiles. Everything else here we were talking about is a tile. Walls are not. 
or an image, maybe in the case of the background. A wall is going to be just like a foundry wall, but it's going to occupy space. And you're going to build your walls within these elevations in order to wall off your rooms and things like that. And then the last one, again, is a tile. It's a basement. It's just like anything else, but we're calling, I'm calling them basements because you're going to have uh, maybe a little bit different um, uh, settings. Basement is where it's going to go underneath whatever your background is. Again, this background could still be an overhead tile, but your basement's going to go underneath that tile. Um, your basements are going to be overhead tiles themselves. You're going to set them to fade or radial, just like you would anything else. And then you're going to use a, uh, a new, um, you're going to use a, a new named feature called strict range. Strict range just replaces the uh, is basement, I believe. We'll look at that when we get into the tiles. And I usually give my basement some kind of negative value, not as much as the background, but I'll give them some sort of negative value so that they're falling underneath everything else. So let's talk about some of the changes to levels. First of all, the, the bad changes. First, the the roofs. The mode where you can see the roofs and they're sort of brightly lit from outside, that was a, a big thing that, that Levels enabled. Foundry made some core changes that prevent that from happening. Uh, Ripper did what he could to uh, keep them as bright as possible, but the roofs will be a little bit darker than you're used to, but you can still see them when you're standing outside of the building. And the second thing that's, that's, uh, that's a bad change is that the light masking, where you could have a light uh, down here on this level um, sort of be occluded by you know, this tile, uh, maybe this tile is, you know, has a, a hole punch through it and you can see like it's a balcony. You could be able to see the light occluded down below. Basically the, the ability to see lights on different levels that actually broke. I'm going to show you all the new settings for that, but the way you fix it is actually with perfect vision. So there's so much, uh, required to change how foundry deals with light that if if both levels and perfect vision were trying to wrestle that under control it would be a mess because they would start conflicting so uh, ripper and the developer of perfect vision decided perfect vision would go ahead and take that task of changing how light works within foundry and then levels just um, leverages those changes in order to make light occlusion work so you don't have to use perfect vision you can actually run it with levels by itself but there's some downsides to it which i'll show you if you're interested but otherwise, I do suggest that you install Perfect Vision and you run that with your level scene. Okay, next change with levels. There's only one button now. If I click this button, you can see all it does is open up the UI. It actually doesn't do anything else. There's no other buttons associated with it, which I like. It keeps everything um, contained over here. And you can see there's a few new buttons added to the ones that you're already used to. And so this becomes the entirety of levels and what you have to uh, deal with. Now, there are some global settings and there's some other uh, settings, but as far as the UI goes, this is it. Another thing that's new is levels can actually read scene data better than it could before. In fact, it makes it really easy to automatically populate your scene data. Back in our galleon scene, if I delete all of these levels, for example, so when I click on this map icon, it will default to nine. And what that's saying is that levels will look at all of the different things you have built. And if it's less than nine uh, apart, it will, it will ignore it. It will put it into a, a level that's already just nine tall. So let's see what happens when I run this. You can see it populated all of my different levels of my galleon now. And that's really awesome. It gave me a, kind of a weird ordering here. So I might want to change this. I like my levels to sort of follow the same sort of order that my, my buildings are, are in. Um, and notice I just, if you hit this little edit button and you can change these around, you can give these even names like this might be the, uh, main deck, right? So you can give these different names. Uh, this might be the bilge. And then when you're done, you can just turn that off and now they're locked in. But this is really great to let you just really quickly, especially if you're working with prefabs and things like that, be able to uh, pull your levels in. Incidentally, you can also set your levels now to be, you see how it's like uh, 20 to 30, 10 to 19, 0 to 9. You can actually set your levels to be like 0 to 10 and then 10 to 20. That used to not be a thing. I've just stuck with my same uh, strategy 
And for ladders specifically, you do have to still go zero to nine. But uh, for the most part, if you guys, if you found that confusing, you can, you can now say zero to 10, 10 to 20, that sort of thing. This is just a 3D view to show you what this galleon looks like and all these different levels of the galleon, right? Here's the gun deck and, and the other decks. And this is what essentially Levels is turning your map into just from a logical perspective. Now you can see my background, I moved to the very bottom, but I could actually move that background up. And if I moved it up, say, say this was the water line, then you wouldn't be able to have, you know, a token up here, look at a token that was underneath the water line. So like this token right here, if he landed underneath the water line, you wouldn't be able to see him from up above. So just keep that in mind that where your background is matters. And that setting for the background is under your scene settings. You see you have foreground elevation and background elevation. You see I set mine to negative 900. That's just so that I could make sure that my background from an elevation perspective was way down at negative 900 and I'm building everything else on top of it. Just because I don't want to have that plane cutting through my map where I can't see above or below it. You may be building a map where you absolutely want that. Like if you're building like a total underground area, um, you know, that's distinct from the above ground area. But in this case, for this map, I wanted my, my water line and everything else to be nice and low. And now one more change to show you before I get to the really, really big change. Uh, there's no such thing as holes anymore now in levels. Uh, holes has entirely gone away. If you have scenes that have holes in them, you can just delete those drawings. They don't do anything anymore. You still have the concept of stair, but now you, and you still have elevator too, but you also have the addition of stairs going one way down and stairs going one way up. This is great for all of you who've been wanting to build like traps or holes where uh, players will fall down, you know, kind of one way, um, ways into different areas or maybe you want them to go up a stair but not be able to retreat back again just for controlling just kind of the flow of your your players through the map so you now have access to those as well and i'll show everyone who doesn't know how to use stairs an example of those here in a little bit and finally the biggest change is there is no more need for polygons you guys remember that in order for this token to see all of its enemies and different levels um, we had to we had to help levels be aware of all of the polygons in three-dimensional spaces so it could calculate collisions and things like that uh, notice there's a player in here my door is open that's why I can see him if I go in there you can see the player so uh, well that's all gone away you don't even need walls anymore to define how uh, levels works and how it identifies you know, where line of sight is to things. The reason is, is because Foundry now makes a map of all of the transparent pixels on the entire map. And what Levels does is it knows, because that map is created, it can read that map. And it can say, look, I know that I'm at level 10 to 19. And when I look around me, I can see transparent pixels. That tells me that that is where the edge of a tile might be that is a roof tile. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to help me calculate vision. So that's why you don't need any more polygons. This was so great because that's where most of the difficulty and troubleshooting for most of you came from when building levels enabled scenes is making sure your polygons were coherent and that they accurate accurately and adequately defined the space underneath a tile that all goes away because now levels is just smartly using the transparent pixels that surround this tile in order to do that okay so let's look at some of our global settings just so you're familiar with those if i go down to levels I can have my tokens automatically scale. Um, so if they're very far down below, they'll look smaller to the tokens above. I like that. I changed the setting a little bit. We'll see how 1.2 works for us. Advanced fog of war is for um, having rooms that are overhead tiles, be able to have their own little fog of war system so that they, they show unexplored before your players can walk into them. I leave that on. Reveal token in fog. I don't usually mess with that one, but it sounds interesting. You can read about it. Lock elevation lets you... Uh, prevent your players from changing their own elevations. This could be important if they're exploring a scene, for example, it's levels enabled and you don't want them sort of passing through a floor um, and just kind of exploring the whole scene on their own. And you can even hide the elevation of the tokens from yourself, from the player uh, or for nobody. 
I recommend leaving tooltips off. Maybe turn it on if you're just getting used to the system, but otherwise I'll leave it off. And then precise token vis visibility and exact token visibility are, um, I leave this on. It's not much of a performance hit and it just makes sure that line of sight is as accurate as possible. You only need exact token visibility if you're using the 3D canvas. And for the wall height module, I also leave tooltips off. Again, you might want to turn those on if you're getting used to everything. Uh, I like to display the height on the wall so I can see them at a glance what their top and bottom ranges are. A vaulting lets a player that is taller than a wall, if the player is, you know, for example, six feet tall, they can walk over walls that are four or five feet. Anything lower than them, they can pass through it like it wasn't there. I leave it on, generally. Um, automatic token height is what sets this. It lets you have every token automatically have a height if it isn't populated. And otherwise, you can set those heights manually if it's a larger beast, for example. And enabling constrained by elevation, I leave that on as well. This, this affects um, area of effect type uh, deployments. And if you need to migrate some old wall height data when you start your world, you may want to tick this on. Otherwise, I, I leave it off and you shouldn't really need it at this point. Now let's look at the scene settings. So you'll notice you've got foreground elevation and background elevation. I don't really use foreground elevation. It's a core boundary thing, but background elevation is really important. So, you know, I might set this in this case, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this at negative 900 and let's set our initial view position. There's nothing new on the grid settings. The lighting settings, you're going to find that perfect vision gives us more options here that you may want to come in and change. The main one I want you to pay attention to is light masking. So this is a levels field. If you enable it, it will do the light masking where you can have a light sort of peeking out from underneath a foreground tile like this. The problem is it's, it's got certain problems with it. And if you want it all to work as designed, that's where you want to install perfect vision. Once you have that installed, it will make foundry do the right things with lighting in order to make this checkbox really work the way that it's intended you can turn it off you can turn it on and hopefully in this video i can show you uh, what it means if you don't have all those things installed but for the rest of you just install perfect vision and you talk to toggle this on and you should be good to go in most cases another really cool thing in the ambiance tab is you can actually stand on top of weather so you can set weather's elevation at say like 10 for example and then if a player is standing above that they can actually stand on the weather and if we selected for example um a fog you can have fog underneath your player's feet i plan on doing some creative things with this i think there's a lot uh, possible with this but in case you guys are wondering what these things do that's what that is and that's it for the major changes to the scenes. Now let's start working in levels. So I'm going to open up my UI and I have no levels created. So I'm going to hit this plus sign a couple of times. And now I'm going to give these some data. So I want my first level ground level. I can change this later, but I'll say zero to 10. Uh, I'll say 10 to 20, 20 to 30. And 30 to 40. And I'll just call this ground level. As soon as you have a player that has some elevation assigned to it, they'll show up on this UI. You can toggle it on and off this way. This just lets you get to that player really quickly. And you can turn it off if you're not trying to do that. I find this very helpful, especially when I'm running battles. I always have my UI open and I always can just jump to the player that I want to see what they're seeing, see what their vision gives them. Uh, this just toggles off the, the ability to make uh, drawings automatically become stairs or not. You may want to make a regular drawing and not have it be a stair. This lets you toggle that on and off. This lets you toggle on and off roof visibility. So if something's designated as a roof, it'll be entirely invisible on any level unless you uh, turn on its, its visibility. That's a little bit different from the last one. This tree lets you place overhead tiles as inside levels. So essentially they make things so that they don't, um, they don't disappear with other levels. You can play around with it. It's like, like if you want to put like a chandelier, for example, inside of a building, or if you wanted to put a tree inside of a building, you would use something like this. The add new level is pretty self-explanatory. Remember you can add negative levels so we can have, for example, a basement. We add that and we say negative 10 
to zero. Oops. And we'll call this basement. That's how that works. And then you can automatically get levels from your scene. Give it a default. I recommend just nine. It'll make all of these levels appear like this if you have things populated in your scene. So let's put some things down in our scene and start working. Notice my background is a background tile. So it's going to go into the background layer wherever I've said that background layer is. In this case, I said it's negative 900, right? So I can't actually set its top and bottom because background tiles don't have a concept of, of height in the way that foreground tiles have. So I'm going to use a new system that I built for an affluent city area. And you can see one of the main things you need to know with levels is that you do need tiles for overhead tiles that are cut out already. These are different floors and balconies and things that if it's going to be overhead and it's going to be, uh, you know, over another room and you want to be able to see through it and you want to see around it, they have to be cut out like their own tiles. So let, let's use an example here. Okay, here's a large room that this doesn't have to be its own tile. If this was part of the base, that's all you need. You'd only need overhead tiles. This just happens to be its own modular room. Uh, I'm gonna, I told you I'd show you guys something cool. So I've got this room selected. Check this out. Here's a token magic effects filter called Dungeon Draft Tint. Let's say I wanted this room to be green. Pretty cool, right? It just changes that red color. Or let's say I wanted it to be just sort of a darker gray. Yeah, I like that. So if you didn't know, you can make things colorable within Foundry. It's pretty awesome. And let's look at this tile that I just laid down. So it's saying, yes, it's an overhead tile. And it's going to fade when somebody walks underneath it. This is saying it's a roof, which in this case, it's not a roof. I'm going to unselect that. Okay, that's our overhead settings. I know technically it's on the ground, but we've called it overhead. I could just as easily uncheck this and it just becomes a background tile. In fact, I'm going to do that right now and I'll show you the rest of these here in a second. And if I bring my player down to level zero, I should be able to walk around and this works just great. Now, I've still got my UI on. So we're going to build some walls in a second, but I want to show you how we don't need them in order to make vision occlusion work. Now I want to put an upstairs above this. So I'm going to go to level, level two above my ground level, level 10 to 20. I can still see all my ground level and everything else, but now I'm going to put another tile in. And I'll select this one just because it's colorable also. And I think that's really nifty and I'm just holding down shift and turning my mouse wheel to rotate that around but you can see it's its own tile it's cut out it's made this way I have tons of tutorials to show you guys how to make these kinds of tiles in dungeon draft or anything else you can even cut them out of original artwork so now this is on the next level above so there's my ground level and I'm going to use my UI to navigate up and down these levels so ground level here's my next level above I'm going to give this a different color really like um, really like something like that. that looks pretty nice and now let's look at the config for this tile notice my z value is 100 i'm going to set this to 101 just to have it on its own little z value remember z value is also a thing and it's set as an overhead tile i don't want it to be set as a roof going to fade when a player walks underneath it and I think I'm good for now let's look at the levels tab now this is because it's an overhead tile this tab becomes active so its height is 20 and its bottom is 10 that means that it really exists in the visible world for players that are standing between 10 and 20 they can walk on this on this tile if the if the token itself is between 10 and 20 right and uh, I'm not going to select 
uh, show even when below. That's something where you use for like balconies. Um, I'm not going to select allow sight. That just makes the tile essentially invisible. That lets lets players see right through it. Um, don't hide this tile in the fog. You know, I'm going to keep that so that it does hide in the fog. And strict range is really only needed um, if I need to force certain things like a basement. So I think I'm okay in this in this case. Real simple. Just is overhead, fade, and make sure it's between the right levels. Now let's see what happens when we select our player. Okay, so I'm walking downstairs and I'm not seeing the, the above stairs, right? So that's, that's how I want it to, to perform. So let's build a staircase. I'm on the ground level. Now I built some special staircases here. So I want to use, um, let's use this one. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to make a copy of that. And this staircase, I'm going to set these at 102 because the staircases are sitting just above whatever floor that they're sitting on. And I want this one to go ahead and fade. It's not a roof. We're going to have this one be at a different level. We're going to go from 10 to 20. This one right here, I shouldn't need to do anything else with. This one I'm going to match right up to that one. You can see I designed these tiles so that it just goes flush, right? So I can build stairs in any way that I want within this room. So the last piece I'm going to add is I'm going to go back to my ground level and I'm going to make a new drawing. Use the square rectangle. And I'm just going to draw right over this square here. You know, configure defaults. Okay, so what happened when I set that down? Because I have this auto stair creator turned on, let's open it up and see what we've got. Uh, if you go to position, it's now called it a stair. And it said, I want you to, when someone walks over it, I want you to take them from zero to nine or zero to 10. It takes you one more than what this is or from 10 down to zero, right? So it just toggles their elevation when they walk over that staircase. And you can see now I'm upstairs running around up here. Let's drag another token in and let's put that token in the basement. And let's see how this performs. So you notice that my player up here is actually slightly larger. My player up here is actually slightly larger than this player down here. And depending on where I'm standing, I just broke line of sight. So I can no longer see or target that character. But if I get close to the edge, I can. not And this is how you can make tactically interesting maps, right? And if I run downstairs, now I'm with my player again. So now, before we start building our walls, let's uh, add some more pieces to this. Uh, first of all, you know what? I'll show you how prefabs work. Uh, I built a set of um, affluent city prefabs, and we're going to grab an entrance here. First, let's engage our UI because levels will help you with your UI. Actually, for our, our bottom floor, I'm just going to leave it on the ground here because these already have some... Um, these already have some levels information in them. If you drop it into one of your, uh, while your UI is on and you drop it into your UI, it'll squeeze everything into the level that you're on. We actually do want that when we go to our second floor, but for our first floor, you don't necessarily need it. So I'll go ahead and move this up here. You can see that a prefab has things like walls, doors, windows, lights, tiles, everything else that you sort of need, right? So let's test our prefab here. Walk up to it. And we're in our building. All right, so that works pretty good. And then let's put a prefab on the next level as well. So now we'll engage our UI, go up to level two. And in this case, we want a dressed room. We'll use the same, same footprint. Uh, we'll use this meeting room here. You can see I dropped it in the exact same spot. And now we have a meeting room up top. 
So let's test and see if this is working. Use this player since he's up here already. So he's on the second floor. He can see his player down below. And you can see when he approaches this, he can't see inside the room. That's the advanced fog of war that levels introduces. So you can hide bad guys and plot devices and things like that in there. And until they open the door, they can't really see what's going on. But now I'm at level two. I can continue a battle if I'm being uh, overrun by enemies from outside, but I'm doing it from the second level. Now what we need on our building, actually let's do this too. Let's add some lights. I want to show you some of this occlusion. Let's go down to our ground level. And just for speed, I'm going to use some ready built pillars that I've got. So this pillar has uh, torches built into it. So let's use that. And they have some smarts to these torches. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to pivot them. And if I select my player downstairs and he walks up to those torches, he can turn them on that way. So effectively, effectively these torches, these are prefabs that comes with lights and some animated tiles and things like that. All right. So I've got my lights down below. Let's go upstairs and see what that looks like. Okay. So you can see, and I'll actually turn my lights down here so we can see it even better. My lights down below are effectively occluded up here. So I can see them sort of hidden underneath this uh, this area and that's the effect that i want right uh, what you're looking at here this is a bug with token magic effects that i've got sitting with the developer but i've effectively occluded this light and i really really like that effect if i go downstairs now i'm standing in the lights and i can see their full radius if I actually refresh the scene, I think it gets rid of these. Okay, so my lights are feeling pretty good here. Let's turn the lights back up. And I actually want to use this piece here as one of my roofs. It's actually a background tile. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to change it to an overhead tile. I'm going to call it a roof. I want it to fade when I walk underneath it. We're going to affect some of these others later. I'm going to leave the top as infinity because it's exposed to sunlight and the bottom is going to be the top of the level I'm on. So 10 to zero to 10, 10 to 20. So at 20 is going to be the bottom of my roof and I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. If I go into my roof mode, see if I did it right, it should appear. So I'm going to drag that right over here on top of my little entrance. And now I want to put some other roofs in here actually made a bunch of roof tiles and get all of these on my Patreon, it's different snowy ones, but there's this really cool set I just made of sort of these affluent roofs. And I'll show you why I like them so much here. In just a second. I'm going to drag out these two pieces here. Now with this one, I gonna, I'm going to use quick scale. Notice I'm just pressing the little, uh, right and left bracket to uh, make you quickly get this to the right place. And then I want this to be, like I said before, I like my roofs to be higher. So I'll put it at Z index 200 just to keep the tiles separated from other tiles on the screen. And that means for this one, I'm going to set this one at 201 because I want it to be just above that, that other tile. And this one I'm going to set at 202. Drag it over here and we'll give it a nice big size so we can cover that rounded area. Okay. This is feeling pretty good. Now let's test or let's look at their settings. So it's set to fade. It is a roof. It's set to fade. That's good. And it should be revealed through war fog of war. Everything else looks good. This should be defaulted to the same fade is roof. Yep. Perfect is overhead. Great. So let's test it. I'm going to show you something that we're, is immediately going to be sort of feel like it's wrong. So here I am navigating my room, but depending on whether I'm under a roof or not, they're occluding in really weird ways, right? I don't want that to happen. 
So what I want to use is the occlusion ID. So if I select all three of these, I'm holding down shift to select all of them. And I'm going to use mass edit. You can do this individually, but it's easier to use mass edit. It's that thing I showed you before. I hit shift E and it opens up this edit box. It looks just like a regular tile config, but it's got some extra goodies attached to it. And in this case, I'm going to say uh, roof one, two, three, because that's a unique name for this roof in this scene. And I'm going to say, I want all of these tiles to use that ID. And I want all of these tiles to be a source of occlusion for that ID. What that means is if I, if a token uh, goes underneath any one of these roofs, all of the roofs will occlude at the same time, right? So now they all have the same occlusion ID and they're all sources and linked. So let's see what happens now as I navigate my building. Notice all of my roofs stay hidden. And if I walk out of my building, let's put this guy at level zero. We'll leave my building. The entire roof is now covered. It's perfect. Just what I wanted. Oh, look at this, the staircase. You can see how you can see it in the darkness. The reason that is Oops, go to levels. Don't hide tile in the fog. That'll make sure that that tile never essentially does that. And I want to make sure that this one is set the same way. Don't hide tile in the fog. Let's go back to our player. And you notice that went away. Okay, I'm going to show you something else because I promised I would. Let's go back to our roofs. Uh, this level. I'm going to select my three roofs. I'm going to hit Shift E again to open up my mass edit deal here. And instead of fade, I'm going to do radial. Hit apply. Select our player again. You see how this doesn't work? I need to refresh my scene. Going from radial for some reason really kind of tricks things out. So I'm going to refresh my scene really quick. Back in our scene. Find our player again. And we'll walk in the building. See how I have this occlusion around me and that could be really cool if you're exploring like a tight dungeon that could be really really fun but what we have now is we have a different option so if i click open the config go to appearance and i set my occlusion radius to say uh 20. now let's go back in our building you can see it makes everything invisible within a 20 foot radius I don't have walls yet. It would have stopped at those walls, but this is a way of making things explorable in a different way. Now your mileage may vary. You can see with V10 and some of this other stuff, these look like clear bugs, right? So these other overhead tiles um, are, are being uh, treated with, with conflicts, right? And now here I'm trying to do that same occlusion method but it's not really working out. So you guys may have to wait until some of the bugs get squashed before all of this works exactly right. But the if you have very simple scenes, this can be a really cool method to use. Now, I did want to show you uh, one more thing, just some, some interesting stuff you can do with these. First of all, again, if you have these in a red tint, you can colorize them. So maybe we want a blue roof like that. And if you have something like this that you want to give a drop shadow to, this is another token magic effects deal. You can just add a drop shadow and it'll always follow the sun kind of coming from the left to the right, unless you change that. So I really like that effect. It gives some more three dimensionality to our buildings and it works great. Now I want to point out that we did all of this and everything worked without walling off our entire building. In this case, now we're at the step where we can wall it off. But it's really exciting that you don't actually have to, uh, that you don't actually need that in order to make it work. Take my UI off and I might add some other just sort of dress around this. Now these trees, for example, are all set up with levels. They've already got 
height and uh, tree canopy above them. I'll show you what that looks like. So there's my ground level. It's all the sh shadows and, and stumps underneath the tree. And this I want to go from 30 to infinity. The tree was taller than my scene was allowing. And now I've got other things in my scene that make it more interesting and really take advantage of all these different level pieces. I'm just manipulating these with the control tokens. And I don't know, maybe there's a street light out here too, just to have another source of light. Let's turn off light masking really quick and see what that looks like. See, you can't see those lights at all from that level. You'd have to go down a level in order to see them. So light light masking lets you actually bring those, those lights up. Alternatively, you could set these lights to infinity and you could see them, but then they'd shine through all of the different scenes or all the different le levels. Now, the only reason this works though is because I have perfect vision installed. It makes these lights uh, function the way that they're supposed to. So now we can work on walls and we'll be done with our scene. Notice when you have your UI uh, active, it will automatically put the walls onto the right level for you. There you go. Now we've got a fully walled and built two story scene. You can see more of our content to see what nine stories, 11 stories looks like, uh, much more complicated rooms and buildings than you saw here today. And also very, very simple versions of these things that uh, like towers and stuff that you can just drop into any scene and have uh, an, an instantly more interesting tactical map to be able to explore or you know interesting battles with so i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you like working with the new levels as much as i have been it's so much easier now that we don't have to deal with polygons just makes it a lot more smooth as far as setup uh, is in terms of getting ready for battles and making sure that everything performs the way that you've designed it to perform. So with that, let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if there's other new features that you wanted me to cover. And until next time, have fun making your maps.